Okay, guys, so we're going to talk about how to um, sort of move from performing RAN simulations into performing um, hybrid LES uh, simulations. So they're pretty important um, because they, you know, they're much accurate, much more accurate representation of the actual turbulence around a vehicle. And, you know, RANS has been around for quite a while. So to be up to date with some modern publications, uh, you'd want to be able to perform this at least on on one of your simulations to just compare it to your RAND simulation. So if you had a study that had 40 RAND simulations, you might want to do one of them using the hybrid LES and see how things compare. And there's papers out there comparing the different methods. Uh, Grant, so how, how do you do that in Fluent? So obviously um, what I've just done here is I've exported uh, this here um, as a case file. Okay, so file export case. And I've all my stuff set up here and that's gonna be um, put onto a sort of HPC and it's going to be accompanied by a batch file uh, just to say how long to run for and how many nodes to use and a fluent uh, .jou journal file and the journal file um, tells fluent uh, what command to execute so I'll just open an example up here so I've named the case file um, VW transporter and you can see that there's these options here. So this runs the initial RAN. So the way, um, before you do your sort of, uh, um, I'll call that steady as well, or I'll just call it RANs. So before you do your hybrid LES simulation, uh, you will do a RAN simulation first and use that as sort of the initial condition before you switch to the hybrid LES solver. So this first part here, um, effectively runs um, the RAN simulation. So another thing uh, to mention is this command here. So this uh, is very important to include. So what this does, and I'll just show you where that comes from here in Fluent, it's in the run calculation tab here. And it's the length scale method. You wanna have that always user specified and have that set to the length of the vehicle. So it affects the pseudo time step um, for your RAN simulation. And you want to have that sort of, you can do a bit of reading up on how the pseudo slime tip can affect things. Um, but in general, you want to always change that uh, so that when it's calculating this length scale, um, it's based on the length of the vehicle. Whereas at the minute, it'll look at your domain and maybe use the sort of overall dimensions of your domain to somehow work out its own length scale. But user specified is the way to go there. And that's sort of included here in, in this. So we'll explain as well um, how to um, get these commands, basically, um, using the Fluent console there. So all of this here, and then that, that then writes a data file so we can post process the, uh, the uh, RAN simulation from that. Now, what we do then is we switch on um, some of these models. So we switch to the hybrid LES version I'm running here is called the SBES. So it's like a stress blending eddy simulation. Um, so I'll show you what that is um, in Fluent here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this and then I'm going to start making changes. And that way I can then just close Fluent without save because this, the changes I'm making here, I want, I want to keep this as a RAN simulation um, in the save file and only turn it into a hybrid LES one in that journal command there on the HPC. So I'll just pause this while it's saving. Okay, so that's all saved up for me. So what we're doing is we're, we're switching here into that SBS model and we're changing some settings here. So you see I write PV coupling 24 and we'll show you what that means in a second. And I go for option two on this here. Um, and then I set my time step here. And then what I do is I run for 1320 iterations um, for five inner iterations per time step then. So that's the time steps there. And this is the number of iterations per time step. So we'll explain a little bit where that comes from. So, and we'll explain how to get those commands by talking to the console uh, here. Right, so first of all, what we're actually doing is we're going to the viscous models here and you can switch then down to, you know, your large eddy simulations and your detached eddy simulations. Now what I run is these SBSs so the way to do that is stay in the K-Omega SST and just flick on, where is it here? 
where is it? There it is here. Gecko standard. It's gone run around here. It's, it's right in front of me and I just can't see it. One second. Okay, the reason it wasn't there on that menu is because first thing you want to do is go to general and switch the simulation to transient. Then come back in here and you're going to see this thing appears down the bottom. So scale resolving SPS. So click that, have it set to SPS. And uh, I do like to run this uh, DS here, dynamic uh, Smargar Rinsky. Um, Grant. So yeah, so you can set OK on that. And it'll tell you this um, thing about sw switching um, to bounded central different thing. And that's fine. So that that there is covered in those, those two commands there. Uh, right, then PV coupling 24. So I'll show you what that is then. So let's scroll on down here to uh, methods. And I want to change from simple to coupled. And it turns out that coupled is uh, option 24 here in PV coupling. See this PV controls then? That then is your controls here so you can edit them if you want to and uh, you can change your you can read up a little bit about what changing these would do but they're fine as they are there um grant so then uh leads on to this then so your time step size so that's a very important thing here so to understand how to set the the time step properly um is a big thing so Where's the best place to talk about that? So you have your flow uh, current number, okay? And that, then there's a formula that you want to sort of keep roughly to for that. So I'll just get it up here. Okay, so the formula is the current number is C is equal to U, which is the speed of the flow, call it U infinity, multiplied by delta T over delta X. So delta T is the time step that we're looking for and delta X is the cell size. So you might remember that I set my face sizing to about five millimeters and also the sort of first BOI that's outside that to five millimeters. So my delta X is uh, 0.005. Um, my U infinity for this simulation. So you see the faster you make the flow go, a uh, smaller delta T you'll have to be. So you don't want to have really fast simulations here or otherwise you'll have to run things for longer. So stick to, you know, maybe around the 100 kilometers per hour as such. Okay. And you want C ideally to be one. Okay. And you can read why that is. Um, so that's kind of the, how, how the information travels uh, through the mesh. So you don't want, you want your time step um, within a given time step, the information not to be jumping over and skipping cells. So uh, C of, of one is a good thing. So if C is one, the formula for delta T sort of becomes uh, uh, delta X over U infinity. So you can see here, if I have these values here, I'm told that the required um, time step should be 0 0.005 over 27.78. So that's coming in at about 1.8-ish by 10 to the minus four seconds now you might even want that to be a bit smaller because uh what's going to happen is that's your u infinity but remember that as the flow moves over your vehicle say like over the top of the windscreen it'll actually speed up and it, you it could nearly get up to you know maybe an extra 50 percent of its original speed so you might want to you know bring this down a little bit to make sure that your current number isn't going above one in those places so you know maybe bring it down to about half of that just to be doubly safe but then that's going to be adding computational expense so yeah that cut out there so um yeah so you'll see that you know having a smaller time step is good for this but it's all it's bad because uh you then need to kind of account that you'll have to use more time steps and that's gonna make the uh, simulation run for longer so you'll see that in the journal file i use a time step of about 3.75 by 10 to the minus four seconds. So I know that I can still get pretty good results um, using that time step, even though the core number will go above one in certain cells. Um, but yeah, and as well too, if I you know, slow the flow down, uh, it'll, it'll sort of make things a little bit more accurate. But what you can do is you can uh, run your simulation like this, and then if you have time later on, you can half the time step and see those 
how it changes things. So experiment around with that. And I know it's a bit unfortunate, like you run a hybrid LES, it could take about 10 days, depending on what the HPC you're using is like compared to the RANS, which is done in about a day. Uh, right, so say you use this time step here of uh, 1.8 by 10 to the minus four, and the length of the vehicle was five meters. So you want this thing, it's called um, a convective flow unit. So it's how long does it take the flow to move over the vehicle? So if the speed of your flow is 27, 0.78 meters per second and the length of the vehicle is 5 so that means it takes you just uh, sort of divide them by one another so 5 divided by 27.78 it says that it'll take about 0 0.18 seconds for this air to fully bypass that vehicle so you want you might want about six of these guys okay so that means your simulation needs to run for six times 0 0.18 you want six convective flow, flow units so I need a simulation that's about 1.08 seconds long. So the reason we want this is we want maybe you have about three initial um, flow passes and then the last three flow passes, we want to take our averaging. We want to get our kind of time average mean statistics for the simulation. And we'll also be taking our drag and lift coefficients from those last three flow passes. And the first three are just a sort of a, you know, a buffer region uh, to kind of let the simulation settle. So if this is the amount of time the simulation has to run for, and then this is our time step, then we can get the, t the total number of uh, our time step size, the total number of time steps required. If we divide them by one another. So we see that we need about 6,000, okay? 6,000 time steps, so it's a lot. And that means that we're gonna have 3,000 first of all, here and then we're going to have 3000 here which will be involved in the averaging okay so hopefully that all makes sense so i'll go back to the journal file now so back in the journal file so you see what i'm doing here uh so yeah so back on the journal file um what we have here is i'm setting the time step as i said to that at 3.75 by 10 to the minus four and i'm running the simulation here for about 1500 time steps and about five interior sort of um, iterations within the time step. After that's done, then I turn on data sampling. So what data sampling does is it, for the future iterations after, or future time steps after this, it's it's making sort of a mean flow. Um, so that's, we're gonna be comparing that mean flow, such as mean velocity, mean pressure, um, to our RAND simulation and comparing things. So this, these mean statistics are really important. So data sampling on, so that's what they call it. It's a bit of an annoying name. And then I add some data sets here. So there's only very standard ones that come with it normally. So you'll only get like um, pressure and um, velocity magnitude. Um, and these are derived quantities. You can work these out from those quantities, but it's nicer to just have them sort of ready, these data sets. So I turn on turb intensity Y plus um, lambda 2 so I'll show you this in fluent in a second and I just list the data sets to make sure they're all there and then this is these last three flow passes in which uh, I, I, I I iterate through things and then I save the transient case and data file and that data file will be massive um, but it, it, it shouldn't affect it'll just be take a while to download it'll be treated like any other data file and what I do finally then is I just export things um, to Insight Gold in case I want to post process and power review and so you can see there's quite a lot um, involved there. You have to tell it everything that you want from that. And you gotta be careful as well here. You need to give the name of the enclosure. So that's why I said always call things enclosure, enclosure one back when you're working through the design modeler step. So I would have mentioned that earlier in a video back. So make sure you know the name of your enclosure. Otherwise you get an error here and it'll be really upsetting to get the error because you might've spent ages getting to this point in the command file. Grant. Okay. So that's all good there. I'll just show where those last few steps come from in Fluent. Uh, so that's down here in uh, Run Calculation. You turn on Data Sampling, Data Sampling Options. Um, just have it, that has all them, including four statistics included. Four statistics important to have included. And then the uh, Sampling Options, I believe here is what I'm looking for. Yeah and then that's the wall, and then I'm just kind of picking out the things I wanted here. So you see, and I selected like Y plus and, you know, like Lambda two, 
and you see they're added there as data sets for the given um, things in closure one cool so that's that's all that is and then setting the time step here the number of iterations here so that was all included in the in the journal file and exporting to Insight gold is done there when you go export uh, you'd have the solution data already loaded in if you loaded the data file in here you'd be able to sort of export it as a solution data grant so that's uh, that's sort of everything um there and how to get it to run um and so you might notice that might take five or ten days to run on a hpc depending the number of cores you have and stuff um so i'll do another video after this just showing some of the results from uh, hybrid LES to show on this van in particular um, and compare the results to the RANs and the uh, hybrid LES. Okay, thanks guys.